there are only so many different facets of your own personality that you can get to and you find yourself repeating yourself. So it's, mm. I mean, there are actors like Olivier and Guinness who are extraordinary mm -hmm. and who seem to have a limitless... Yeah, their reservoir, it goes... Incredible. Yeah. And yeah. I don't seem to have that. Yeah. So I'm not complaining or whining about it. I'm just recognize the fact that it exists. When you think of cool, who do you think of? Matthew McConaughey? George Clooney? Oh, Brad Pitt. But who did they learn it from? Paul Newman has always been a staple of being cool. To his ruggedly handsome looks, his style that helped amplify his image, and his attitude of going against what people expected of him. What makes him cool? Well, it's really not that simple of a question. It's like saying, well, what do you like about this painting? The picture, the framing, the feeling, the colors, the style, the time era. Well. Those do play a major part, but it comes down to the individual strokes that the artist makes that creates the whole picture. That's what Paul Newman does with his characters. You might be asking yourself, is it because he was attractive, an anti-hero, was it him, ooh, that he liked driving really, really fast in fast cars? Or was it those baby blue eyes? Was it because he was just born cool? Yeah, baby, yeah! Movies such as Cool Hand Luke, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, Sting, The Hustler, The Color of Money, The Road to Perdition, The Long Hot Summer, HUD, Cars, The Verdict, and the list goes on. What do all these characters have in common? They're all outsiders. The Drifter, The Outlaw, The Weirdos. But that's just the surface. Let's dive a little deeper. Now, you could argue that all his roles were the same. All the mumble, talking, playing the cool guy, and the smart Alec attitude. And maybe that's partially true, but actors only have one body, one voice, one face. And once you, the audience, gets that image stuck in your head, it's hard to break it. You could say, Cool Hand Luke, Butch Cassidy, and The Hustler are all the same kinds of roles. He plays a cool and has witty dialogue in all of them. This is where it gets interesting. Later in his life, Paul Newman was able to do roles that were not really the typical Paul Newman roles. He flipped his image on his head. Now, what would a role look like if he has no wit, no coolness, or charm? It all ran out. That's where the verdict comes in. In 1982, he played an alcoholic lawyer who chases ambulances, trying to save his career from a medical malpractice and takes it to court. Rather than settling, which is against the family wishes, the pressure is on, and it's hard to watch. Every time he gets a step forward, it takes two steps back. And how does he deal with it? You guessed it, drinking. There'll be other cases. There are no other cases, this is the case. The walls start to close in and everything is starting to fall apart. It shows a more realistic side of Paul, not relying on his previous bag of tricks. Four five days early, I lose my star witness and I can't get a continuance and I don't care. I'm going up there, I'm gonna try it, I'm gonna let the jury decide. You know, they told me about you. They said you're a hard ass, you're a defendant's judge. I said to hell with it, to hell with it! You can see the torture in this man by the heavy bags under his eyes and the distant stare. Or how he carries himself sluggish from the booze and weighed down from the heavy burden on his shoulder. Life has sucked out everything he has. Not the lawyers. Not a, a marble statue. Trappings of the court. Those are just symbols of our desire to be just. They are, in fact, a prayer. I mean, a fervent and a frightened prayer. In my religion, they say, act as if you had faith. See, I believe there is justice in our hearts. He's fighting for something, but what is it that keeps him going? One of my favorite roles from him is from two movies, The Hustler and The Color of Money, because we get to see a character grow. In The Hustler, it's more about the game of pool, how hustling is a part of it, and where Eddie still has a lot to learn about becoming a great hustler instead of letting his emotions get the best of him. A hot, blazing young kid ready to beat Minnesota Fats just because he's the best around. He's a runaway and he can't seem to find any answers in the world other than through pool. 
He winds up falling in love, but she isn't the most stable. She kills herself after sleeping with Bert, who's Eddie's boss, and Eddie triumphantly beats Minnesota Fats and gets himself banned from all the pool houses. You better kill me, Bert. You better go all the way with me. If they just bust me up, so help me God, Bert, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna kill you. Don't ever walk into a big time pool hall again. Fast forward 25 years. We meet Eddie again, but this time, life has added miles to him. Paul gives Fast Eddie another layer of complexity to the part. In The Color of Money, we really get to dive deeper into how Fast Eddie hustles everyone. He trusts no one. No one is safe. He finds a wild stallion much like him when he was younger. A mirror of himself. Again and again, Tom Cruise doesn't listen, letting his ego get in the way. Sound familiar, Fast Eddie? Where the goal is not to win, but to pull as much money as you can. You have to lose to win. Fast Eddie is living through Tom Cruise's character. It's not until the third act where Eddie finally faces himself. He gets hustled by a pool shark and gets taken advantage of. But the money is a metaphor. Not only is he handing over most of the cash that they won for the week, he's handing over his dignity in the game, his ego, and his self-respect. It's a turning point for him. He realizes he's not the man or the pool player he used to be. It's not that he lost, it's that he lost his way. It shows Eddie's true colors of how he feels towards himself. It's all about self-respect. He immediately drops Tom Cruise and goes down a road he knows he can only go down, working on getting back on the saddle of perfecting his craft for the pool tournament. Fast Eddie fights his demons, falling back in love with the game he loved so many years prior. He ends up beating Tom Cruise, thinking he's back. But it turns out that the student had become the master. Tom Cruise hands him their cut from him losing against Eddie. What's up? It's for you. Hey, how you doing? It's your cut. Cut of what? For the game. What game? Our game, man. I dumped. Got a front to lay all 4,000 on you, and then I dumped. All I do is dog about four shots, you know? But Eddie, you know something? You are a very, very good player. The next day is the final game to win the championship, but something is swirling around in his head. He forfeits, leaving the money on the table and his reputation behind but he's won his own self-respect back. Sometimes you have to lose to win. Just like in The Hustler, he goes to fight the best pool player in town, Tom Cruise. That's where the movie ends, but where his real journey begins. That's what makes him so cool. It's not about the money, the fame, or the glory, but the craft and his self-respect towards himself. It's why Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid go out in a blaze of fire. It's for their own self-respect for not going down without a fight, or how in the road to perdition, he's glad it's Tom Hanks who's taking him out. He wouldn't want it to be anyone else. I'm glad it's you. Because he's like a son to him, and he understands why Tom Hanks needs to do it. It's about Tom Hanks' own self-respect. Or how in Cool Hand Luke, he eats all 50 eggs in an hour, or doesn't fight back by digging and filling up his own grave for hours and hours on end. That even at his darkest moments, where doubt and fear creep in, they can't break him. It won't break him. That's something they could never take away from him, and that's a powerful thing. He has a reason to fight and for us a hero to root for. I think that's what made Paul Newman so special. He was able to portray these emotions to such a depth that in time where acting was more telling than showing, it's why we can't stop watching him because we relate to it on a very personal level. Even if you can't put your finger on it, you understand it. We ourselves fight our own self-respect every day. It's why we try new hobbies, change our appearance, follow new trends, or care what others think. It's all about our own self-respect, trying to figure out who we are in this world. And it's more relatable than ever, with social media bleeding into every aspect of our lives. We try to get more followers, become more successful, and why we watch those self-help videos. It's us trying to fit in, but Paul doesn't do that. He's trying to be himself, be his true self, and I just think that's magical. Eddie, what are you gonna do when I kick your ass? Pick myself up and let you kick me again. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Just don't put the money in the bank, kid. Because if I don't whip you now, I'm going to whip you next month in Dallas. And if not then, then the month after that in New Orleans. Oh, yeah? What makes you so sure? Hey, I'm back. That's his secret. That's the art of acting cool.